Lucas Quantum Mechanics, problem 2.15. We're going to look at the ground state of the harmonic oscillator and find the probability of finding the particle outside the classically allowed region. So if we look at our um, potential, it's a, just a parabola for the harmonic oscillator. Um, we'll have some uh, value of energy. So for a classical oscillator, um, the, the, uh, there would be some value of the uh, kinetic energy, and then once it, once it reaches the point where the potential comes up to meet its energy, so right at this point and right at this point we have a turning point, so the particle can't go any further and it will turn right back. So anything outside here and or outside here is um, outside of the classically allowed region, right? So since we're looking at the ground state of the uh, harmonic oscillator, the energy that it has is h bar omega over 2 of this, all right? And the potential for the uh, harmonic oscillator, we know 1 half m omega squared x squared, right? So when these two are, when these two are equal, then we know we have our turning points, right? So, um, or I, I guess uh, in, in the hint that uh, Griffiths uses, or gives us here, he sets uh, E here equal to, to this, I believe, yeah, and then uh, solves, solves for X. All right, so either way, uh, what, we'll, what we'll get by equating these two is X equals plus or minus each bar over M omega, the square root of I. Uh, which is equal to, if you put the one half, uh, uh, if you put E equals one half h bar omega, you use that, you can get what Griffiths has, which is uh, plus or minus uh, two E over M omega squared, under a square root like that. All right, but the, the idea here is to, you know, we're just going to be integrating square of the wave function and finding the probability. So uh, the way I'll do this, uh, we want to know the probability that it's on the outside. I'm just going to find the probability that it's on the inside and then subtract that from 1 to get it's on the outside. Right. Um, to make this a little bit easier, I'm just going to uh, call this plus or minus the square root of 1 over alpha. Because um, it was so alpha, it's just equal to m omega h bar. Okay, so what we're going to do is, so the probability that it's inside the classically allowed region goes from minus 1 over alpha to the square root up to 1 over alpha to the square root of the ground state of the harmonic oscillator squared, right? And uh, it's all real, so it's just squared. And we have a, at least for stationary states, right? Uh, and we're integrating with respect to x. So um, we're just going to take the, the ground state to find the equation number the ground state is given in equation 2.59, which is, write this down here, m omega over pi h bar. This quantity is to the one fourth power. And then we have our golden Gaussian part. right so now we just plug this right up in here 
probability that one on the inside is equal to, so I'm going to bring this constant out front, m is omega pi h bar, and this is now to the power of 1 half, because we'll multiply two of them together, and then we have our integral from minus 1 over alpha under square root to 1 over alpha under square root um, of this squared, which is just e to the minus m omega, no 2 this time, because we, we uh, multiply two of them together, h bar x squared dx. All right. Now, um, so there's kind of a, um, and you know, we might as well put this uh, into terms of alpha, since we're, we're using this anyway. Here, here we have our definition of alpha, here we have our expression down here. Okay, so we have an, uh, there's an alpha over pi, under the square root out front, minus one over alpha. I mean, I guess we could go without putting everything in terms of alpha, but why not? Um, Okay, and then this is just a minus alpha x squared dx. All right. Um, now, uh, when we integrate a Gaussian function, it you was know, something like a bell curve. We come on, we integrate, and we and we get uh, just a little bit at first, and then we're adding a lot as we, you know kind of picture our line of integration sweeping across and scanning the area of this and multiplying it all, or adding it all together. Um, we're, we're adding a lot more right here, and then we start down and, and add a little bit more. So we get uh, this function that looks kind of like this, something like this. It's called an error function or a sigmoid function. Uh, you can use it. Uh, some People use these when they talk about learning cur learning curves. You know, it, it kind of starts out and it gets really steep and kind of. Anyway, there, you see this pop up in a lot of places. Uh, so um, we have to look up in a table what this is. Um, so I just put it into Google uh, to find our the numeric values that we want. Uh, first, I'm just going to make a nice little. Um, Substitution of our, uh, I'm just going to call, I'm going to write this, uh, I'll just write it right here. So y equals square root of alpha x. All right. So when we do that, um, our, our expression up here comes down to 1 over square root of pi. And now we just have a minus 1 to 1 e to the minus y squared dy. All right, so this is just a more pretty form for when we look it up and look it up. I, I just, uh, you know, when you integrate this, you get the error function. So uh, just from Google or whatever, uh, we have a 1 over pi squared. And there's a, uh, a pi over square root of 4. Take here. Um, I'm not sure where my. Anyway, I have a square root of 4 down here. I made a mistake. I will pause this video and look it up to make sure. So, this is just how we write the error function error function of 1 minus the error function of minus 1. So, um, you know what, I, 
I'm just going to Yeah, let me pause this and just work it out real quick and make sure I didn't make a mistake here. Okay, yeah. No, I didn't I did not make a mistake. Um, Alright, so just um, okay. Alright, so the pies cancel out, we just get a one half. And then uh, this error function is symmetric about the origin, even if I didn't quite seem to draw it that way. Um, so when we take uh, an error function, uh, function of one minus an error function of uh, minus one, what we get is two times the error function of one. So that's that's where the two goes away. Okay. So um, when we when we look this up, we get a. All right, so again, this is the total probability of it being found inside the classical region. Looks like we get a uh, 0 0.8427, okay? All right, so we just uh, go ahead and we find the probability of it being outside the classical region. All right, so there's an 84.3% uh, chance you'll find it inside the classical reason, region. And when we just take you know, 1 minus p in, and we'll, we'll just put this to uh, three significant digits like Griff has asked for, we get 8.157. All right. Um, so there we go. That's the, the probability that the quantum mechanical simple harmonic oscillator will actually break quote unquote, the rules of classical mechanics, and you'll actually find it sort of tunneling into the wall of this potential, right? Meaning, the stretching, you know, if you picture a mass on a string or whatever, it's stretching the string, or the spring, a little bit uh, further than it, it should be, you know, for the amount of energy that it has. So, and it's actually a fairly, you know, 15, 16% is, is a, is a significant, you know, it's almost almost a fifth of the time you'll find it outside of where classically it should be. So, kind of a cool result.